Hi, deep from our bunker deep in the Ooh. bowels of the earth. Bowels of the earth. <laughs> Far below the rest we of those above. We don't even know where it is. This is Antarctica. The, <laughs> this is the nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Matt. Cheers. Mike. I'm Mike Pastor. This is why I drink. Oh. <laughs> it's Doug Stanhope line, oh, by the way. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, so you're not plagiarizing because no, you I'm gave not. credit. No, I give credit. No, for sure. <laughs> Pamela. Hello. Christy. Hey. And Riley. Cheers. Hey. <laughs> uh, and nobody's got the, the beer we were going to sample now. Oh. oh. And there's a... Right there. A growler. Mm-hmm. No, there's a cup of it. Oh. There's a cup of that. I will grab that cup right now. I'm not afraid. I will double fist this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well planned. <laughs> right. We're drinking a sour from Valley Center Brewery today. This is called a, a sour? This is called sour or about sour batch three, three sour, right? ba- sa- sour barrel number eight. Mm-hmm. It's, it's French. It's sour. Sour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sour, it's yeah. sour, no. Probably not. I French. think it's excellent. Um, it's very sour. Um, <laughs> it might be too sour for some people, but I really like it. It's not the strongest alcohol content. I think it's like at a four. Four point eight. Four point four point three. Four point three like around there. Oh, it's and uh, four point three. Like kombucha. Guarantee you, it's four point three. It's apple cider like vinegar ish. Apple cider yeah. vinegar is yeah. kind of it's you know, good though. It's funky. Yeah. But you know, I, I haven't I tried it yet. And, is it uh, vinegar? I think it's an yeah, it's kind beer. of. It is. It's almost like a yeah. balsamic. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's good it's though. In a cup. Exactly. What about that sweet stuff that you line your cup with and you sip it and you taste the sweet with the sour? Huh, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that stuff is. It's like a. Yeah. Sure. They have those. They're like uh, lozenges or something that you can. It, it makes sour things taste sweet. Do you know what you want to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, they make them. I can't remember what they're called, but you can buy them on Amazon. They're a few bucks for a box. And when you, like a lemon tastes extremely sweet with them. Oh, it's wow, something about binding to your, uh, it, it binds to your taste receptors and makes everything taste sweet. No so can you gain weight from that? I mean, would you gain weight from that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. But if you're drinking sour, why defeat that and have something ahead of you it? Wanted to I think it's more of like when you take these things and uh, t- say, for instance, eat a lemon, all of a sudden it tastes sweet. It's, it's right, just odd. It's sour. just an oddity. Yeah. I mean, I'm still not past the fact that we can make Sour things taste sweet. I mean, people, the future is now. Do you understand? <laughs> like that, that is, that that's my, amazing. <laughs> that was my first thought. I was like, it is 2015, isn't it? <laughs> Flying by jet aircraft. Now, where's my hoverboard? Sweet as sour. It's where's coming. my hoverboard? Really? We're it's that close. Yeah. yeah, so if you haven't tried a sour before, check this stuff out. Valley Center Brewing. Mm-hmm. They have two sours on tap, sour barrel number eight, which is what we're doing tonight, and sour barrel number three, which is also really good. It's a little sweeter. It reminds me of the Dutchess a lot. For people who know sour beer, um, they should know the Dutchess. And then they're also going to start, they're almost done, with, they're almost tapped out um, of these two sours, but they're going to put four more sours on tap when that, when that happens. So nice. super excited and looking forward to that because I'm a sour fiend at this point. <laughs> Yeah, like kicked out of a bar for drinking sour once. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. The greatest move I ever made is like the tasting sour. That's actually my favorite sour. That was a good sour. What were this like? Ginger sour. Ginger, Ginger, lemon, and honey. Oh, my goodness. And all of those notes come through picture perfect. It was amazing. Me and Government. Chelsea actually went to the brewery that it was from up in Portland, and I oh, had like a whole yeah, bottle nice. of it. So I was like, ha. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I won in the end. So it's excellent. Fuck you, Churchill's. Yeah, two fills can go to home. I want to burn the mother down. Yeah, I've been there in a while, but I remember the part of the church has made a little bit of a snot. Not in actuality. Not irritating. I would never do that. But if it's ever ever under under new management, I'm going back. Because I can't. (laughs) 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 Anyway, so tonight we decided we'd discuss assumptions. And... The reason we're inside is we set up outside around a nice roaring fire, started everything, turned everything on, went and to play, and just started raining. Torrential rain. Torrential rain. <laughs> <laughs> drought is over. Like, I think we just got like 20 inches of rain. <laughs> so we assumed sunny California was going to be sunny California. Yeah. It's raining. Take that, Jerry Brown. Sunny right. California in a drought. Right. 
Yeah, but um, not yeah, so we had to move inside. No, yeah, we're, no, we're not in Southern California. We're the bunker is somewhere America. else. Yeah. Oh, right, right. It just so happens we have a weather vein in AKA Southern California because we are mountain. trying to remind ourselves of, you know, <laughs> our natural home. Yeah, so assumptions. I think, I think uh, it's an important topic that we haven't addressed yet. In any conversation you have, I think you have to start with certain assumptions or build those through, through defin uh, defining your terms and things like that ahead of time. Because we all, we all start with a certain idea in our mind about what we mean by certain things. And if everyone is not on the same page for those assumptions then miscommunication often can happen. One of the assumptions I think that we all make when we start with our conversations on here is an adherence to the non-aggression principle. Uh, any, anytime, I know for me, anytime I share an opinion, uh, that's actually my opinion and not just like playing devil's advocate. When I'm, when I'm expressing my own opinion uh, I, uh, I, the assumption is always that I wouldn't ever use force uh, except for in self-defense. Uh, and I think that's the same for everybody else mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah, I can agree to that. Yeah, yeah for sure. So I think... <laughs> What? We're done. <laughs> <laughs> the end. The end. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Right. Something <laughs> about robot sex. Yeah. Blah, 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 robot sex. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, but no, it's a good, it, I think it's important to talk about because a lot of times we have these discussions on, on these podcasts, on, on this internet show, on the Voluntary Virtues Network. <laughs> <laughs> The show is called The and Nook, brought to you by the Natural Rights Coalition. <laughs> Natural Rights Coalition .org, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brought to you by the our sponsors, Agris Dales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, no, we we all have certain assumptions as uh, because we've all been discussing things for a long time, so we know the the assumptions that we all make when we're making our. Uh, when we're talking about our topics, but I don't know, I don't think everyone who views the podcast always knows uh, those assumptions behind some of the ideas that we speak. Right. Well, I think that's true for any conversation. You know, people just don't know that. So do we always have to wear our, do we always have to tell people things in the beginning? I mean, how does... Does, does everything need a disclaimer? I don't yeah, know. does everything need a disclaimer? <laughs> Not necessarily a disclaimer, but if I'm going to have like a, like a discussion with somebody about something that, excuse me, that we may disagree on, I always think it's a really good idea to like define terms. Like, the, you're, yeah. like, like a word that's going to come up really common in the conversation. Like... For example, like I, I have, uh, I haven't talked to God in a while, but you know, I, I, I consider him a good friend. But he, he takes things from like what you might call the, the left side of the perspective. And so when we talk about something, like you know, we can have a rational conversation because we're friends. But you know, I, like say, like we have to sit there and define liberty sometimes. Like, okay, well, what does liberty mean? You know, and so that, and then that almost becomes a, a separate conversation. But with maybe terms that aren't so as like at, at that you might not consider to be as pillars like liberty, freedom, justice, that sort of a thing. Uh, you know, lesser terms like you need to define them in order to have a discussion. Sometimes, like a like to have a rational one, you really yeah. kind of do because otherwise, you're gonna you're both gonna be making points and you're like shooting for different targets. You know, I guess. Yeah, like a I, I see. To... I see that so many times in discussions when people disagree that people are talking past each other because mm -hmm. yeah. they're making different assumptions about things like definitions of words. Mm -hmm. and, and that, that halts the conversation. You have to define every word within the conversation. It does. Uh, for uh, It's just being open to the discussion and just trying to understand what the person is trying to explain to you. But I think when you're making certain assumptions, uh, like, like capitalism is a huge one. Yeah. Socialism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, these are these are words that could be defined differently for like just about everyone. 
Yeah. Uh, in our previous conversation on abortion, abortion, I think, means something different for different people. A lot of people don't know exactly what an abortion is exactly. You know what I mean? Um, well, I mean, uh, okay, well, here we go. Or, so, or, what, <laughs> or, what, or, what, or what an abortion can be. Right, okay. I mean, maybe see what we're going with there, that like maybe, you know, what is a, a limit to that, or is this too early, is this too late, that sort of thing. Not too early, but, you know, too late, you know. Is that, that Would that not be abortion, and, with, and somebody might consider that murder past a certain point, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I mean, uh, that that's exactly one of the assumptions I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, abortion is literally a termination of the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. What is it, a pregnancy it, then? You know, I was dun, thinking dun, about that. Abortion you know, it really is. <laughs> it's a gestational <laughs> period. <laughs> of, into that. But is yeah. it an aggressive thing where the sperm? Well, goes hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me back up a second. What I mean by a termination of a pregnancy is that the baby. Is no longer in the womb. That doesn't necessarily. Fetus. fetus just means baby in Latin. Mm-hmm. But that's right. Yeah. But <laughs> I think people's perspective right. of baby like and baby. fetus are quite different. Oh, that's another assumption too, though. Right. So. Um, but what? But what I mean is that it's not necess- It doesn't necessarily mean an end to the to the uh, fetus. The abortion. How does it an abortion does? Right. Does it just how means does- not in the womb anymore. I don't yeah. understand. How does an abortion not mean an end to the fetus? Because it may live outside of it. It huh? may. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's lots of cases where a, ba- a child still, yeah. goes through an yeah. abortion yeah. procedure and lives yeah. through it. So and by aborting, you just mean taking it out of the womb? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but when, typically when don't we speak early, huh? Take well, they early. Uh, removing it early. Yeah, prematurely. Yeah, with the intent of not to live. Intention. With the intent of. Removing it from the womb. Yeah. For what purpose? To to uh, end the attachment. Yeah. To to end its dependency on the mother. Yeah. To end its dependency on the mother. Once it's out of the womb, it can be depe- It's still dependent, but it's not necessarily dependent on the on the mother anymore. So I mean, I, I yeah. I don't even want to go there because I, I don't want to do an abortion issue. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, episode. Right yeah. Now. And so I feel like that's where that would lead to. But I definitely hear what you're saying loud and clear. And I, I, there's one guy, uh, an author, uh, Jay Kirscher Murdy, and he says something really profound in, in regards to this whole issue of assumptions and talking past each other. He basically says that, like, when we generally speak to each other, we don't really speak to each other uh, or, you know, communicate to each other very well because, like you're saying, Steve, we have these assumptions and these um, pre- established notions of how we understand things and so when we hear other people speak to us we're not so much listening to other people as much as we are listening to our reactions to what they're saying and so when we respond we respond from those we respond from ourselves and not responding to them and it it breaks down communications to become effectively non-existent in any uh, true meaningful sense of of the word from person to person so I think it's definitely important to like drop almost in in a way those assumptions or those those filters that we um, hear people through instead of hearing the person for like what they're saying. Well, when you hear a title like Republican or Democrat or even uh, voluntarist, I think is a good one because usually you get to define that term. I think right that's because most people don't a lot have of a preconceived. Assumption about what, that. What Not is, a very yeah. well, good one. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people who I know are that are voluntarists specifically like that term for that reason. Yeah. It's because you're not getting a bunch of assumptions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Anarchists. For sure. yeah. Like right. anarchists. Yeah. Like anarchists. Exactly. Is a huge assumption. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you, if uh, I, an example would be just you know turning on cable news and on any day of the week, you know it's here's the person we found who's a consultant for. Democratic, blah blah blah, nonprofit, bliggly boo, and here's the person we got as consultant from Republican National Committee, blah blah blah. He's old and crusty and whatever, and they argue for about five minutes, and that that is the argument that is presented to you as this is the only argument there is, and they will do that exact same thing for weeks, you know, of the same argument. So that's that's the problem is is that because we've been 
shown that since we were all pretty little is that we have these things built into our head a lot of times of assuming that you're either from the that, left or you're from the right. That ar arguments are dichotomous. Yes, and that is apparently, you know, again, that's what we're presented is that that is the only way there is. There's either one side or the other side. That's it. Mm -hmm. But of course that's wrong. So that's where we get, you know, of course where we get those 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 almost like angry reactions of like, well, you think the exact opposite I do. Because well, you don't think exactly the same as I do. Yeah, so because you're you're either not because you're not on my side, you are obviously the exact opposite. You know, which so is that, why when you often talk to a conservative, they call you a liberal, mm -hmm. and when you talk to a liberal, they call you a conservative. A, yep, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Have what you guys heard? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Have you guys heard that? Like, I'm, sh I'm sure you probably have. That, like, you know, the, the line of the, you know, the polar extremes isn't so much a line so much as it is like a circle. Ah, like, uh, yeah, I was taught that. The old right, so to speak. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Like, it's, it comes back to itself. Well, Here. the the way I've I've heard it heard the circle though is that anarchy is the same as totalitarianism because it leads what? to totalitarianism. And that's where the circle meets. I thought we were supposed it's the to... Whole, it's the whole revolution it's a, instead it's of it's evolution. A totali right. It's a totalitarian philosophy in regards to oneself and it, excluding, you know, not subjecting Ruling others yourself. people to, to your own yeah. authority. Yeah. Personal sovereignty. Yeah, personal sovereignty. Yeah. So, I mean, yes and no. Hey, y'all, <laughs> I thought we were all Illuminati because we don't believe in borders and stuff, and so that would therefore mean we believe in, like, one world government or something. I thought that's what... It's, speaking of assumptions, you know, like, wait a minute, like, I've heard that before. It's not yeah. one yeah. world government. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, you know, exactly, Seven but that's the thing. some odd governments, they're all <laughs> governing one yeah. individual. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. Freely associating with each other. Which... There's another it's assumption. It's really a good word anymore. That. Government's not the term for that, because that's not what government means. But self-government, I guess that would be called. But. So what kind of assumptions, what can we walk away with, like, with assumptions? Not, I mean, learning to do when we get into a conversation. Don't uh, assume things about people just because they maybe look a certain way. That's, that's number one. Numero uno, don't assume something about somebody because of the way they look. And then beyond that, if somebody says something that may like completely disagree with what you say does not necessarily mean that, that everything else they say is going to be the exact opposite of what you think. Mm -hmm. I another, think it's important uh, to actually listen to people too. Right. Uh, rather than hearing what, uh, hearing your assumptions, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Yeah. yeah. That's a great yeah. thing. You, what do you mean by that? It, yeah. You, yeah. you need, you need yeah. to really get on a a, a level understanding an even understanding of what you really mean to ask them what do you mean when you say that and use a, a clearer term use um, grab the thesaurus if you need to <laughs> nonviolent communication yeah, is very good about that, that. Is, yeah, yeah. Whenever, yeah definitely when, useful in an argument for sure like if mm -hmm. you're having a disagreement with somebody like sometimes you have to break it down to arguments another another one because you know in in debate an argument is just a discussion mm -hmm. he did um, misunderstanding. The heated uh, is an assumption that's built into the word a lot of times. Uh, or of argument, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was. So that's it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's um, you know, um, you know, we're, I mean, there, there's, there's still really a lot to go with that. I mean, you know, you, so. You, you, you have an argument with somebody and you're, you're assuming this, this and that and the other about them. There's uh, a lot of people don't bring this up, but this is something that they, te they teach lawyers to do. And, but it's really, really good in a lot of times just a general discussion or an argument if you want to term it that, you know, what, whatever. Socratic method. You just keep asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. And you will get to the root of what somebody's talking about, whether you agree with them or not, just by asking questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what do you think about that? Okay, what do you think about that? And you will get down to what they're talking about. You may end up agreeing with them after a bunch or, of questions. Or they, or they, they may end up agree, or exactly. realizing that they don't actually... Agree with statism. Well, yeah, agree with their, what they're trying to the, originally... 
Yeah, you, you, you look at the, the, the people who are really good down. about, who are, who are really good at presenting the ideas of liberty and all that sort of stuff. Really what they're doing, if you pay attention, they're doing exactly that. They're using the Socratic method. Mm -hmm. They're asking questions. Okay, well, why do you think that? Where did you come to that conclusion? Exactly. You know, based on what experience, so on and so forth. Yeah. So, so if you do that and you, you ask people questions and you really get down to what do they believe on a, a moral level mm -hmm. and, and without making assumptions about, oh, they're a statist, they, they, they believe in using force and all. If you get down to asking them about is it moral to use force, um, for instance, to fund the government, uh, is it okay um, to disobey a moral law or an immoral law, for instance, you, you're not going to find anybody who's going to say, well, it's very hard for me to find. Yeah, ask somebody, you know, is it is it okay to disobey an immoral law? And you'll find a couple of people. Yeah, though. you'll, you'll find a couple. I mean, there there there's some people I've talked to, and they're just straight up like they'll straight up Sir Lex said Lex. The law is the law, and that yeah. is it. You know, yeah. or they'll and say, then, well, if you don't like the law, then just then vote move. and yeah. change it. You, or you move. can move so, to Somalia, move. man. Get out. Of here. <laughs> Get out. And then you can always. No, no, no. Slavery was once legal, and w it, it was illegal to harbor a slave. You know, so would, would you have disobeyed that law? You know what I mean? That if you keep asking them, you can. I, I, when I do it, at least, I. It's hard for for me to get people to really embrace the evil behind state. I, you can't get somebody to openly admit that. They well, that. yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you if you present it as. Um, well, I guess, how's the way to look at that? If you present it as you are wrong, then that's where people... Okay, nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. That's like universal yeah. human shit. Nobody wants to admit that they're wrong, she ever. So, you know, you don't... You can't talk to somebody and say, like, well, you're wrong. You, you just kind of like... I, I think what you guys are talking about is the right way to go about doing it. You just keep asking questions. Right. But if you start saying, they're like, oh, well, you're wrong about this... Then that's, that's where people block. are like, well, I'm not wrong. Yeah, they put up a block because yeah. they don't want to be wrong. Nobody wants to be wrong. That's, you know. Well, you're wrong. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, uh, one of them is, is uh, I was thinking about this on the on the way over here today. Yes, I walked to Antarctica. Damn straight I did. <laughs> Remember, we're in Antarctica, everybody. Right, right. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so on, on the way over here, I was thinking about, like, the whole, um, like, you know, um, you know, America, land of the free, uh, land of the free thing. You know, and it's just the more you kind of think about it, it's. I mean, talk about propaganda. Okay, so <laughs> let land of the free, last Western country to make slavery illegal, land of the free. <laughs> All right, um, land of the free. Uh, you can go wherever you want to. You know, this is America. Well, unless you're Japanese during World War II, you might end up in a camp somewhere. <laughs> Land of the free. Oh, you know, freedom of the press. You can, uh, you know, do whatever you want to do and report about whatever you want to report about unless it's World War I and you get, you know, run up on the Espionage Act. Or, nowadays, Barack Obama apparently has arrested, what, eight reporters under wow, the Espionage many, Act, wow. which is more than the it, wow. entire sum since World War One, And ran mm -hmm. one into a tree? Yeah, yeah, Michael Hastings, yeah, that, I mean, Google I, that, I, just, I, just I don't go. know that that was Obama himself. Right. No, it, was, it wasn't Obama himself, <laughs> I mean, the, uh, what's her name, Kimberly Dvorak, who was doing the really good uh, uh, investigative jur journalism on that, you know, she presents the facts on it, and she says that it's really funny, is after she does the little presentation on it, everybody always asks her, well, who do you think did it? And she goes, I don't know. All I know is that there's something fishy here, and you can easily point that out, that something horrible happened here, and he didn't crash the car himself. You know, so... What, what are you talking about? Um, Michael, Michael Hastings. Hastings. Yeah. Michael, who was we went off. Oh, okay, we'll go over this. Yeah, yeah. it's a tangent. Yeah. We'll talk about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're it's assuming everybody has a tangent. Yeah, right. yeah. Assuming. yeah, we assume <laughs> something. <laughs> and so I guess... I, 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 think, I think it has to be said... When you assume you make an ass out of you. I was just going to say that. Thank you, Steve. It had to be said at one point or another. You can't make assumptions without making an ass of yourself. No, you. You me. and me. Oh, me. That's yeah. okay. Ass. 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 You and me. Okay. Yes.
You can't make it. Right. Okay. Without make no. And why is everybody <laughs> assuming that donkeys are assholes? Because we're saying like you can't make an ass. I'm assuming we're referring to a donkey, right? Yeah. You can't. Are all donkeys yeah. assholes, or is like that Pretty just a much, thing? Yeah, you yeah. cannot yeah. like you know. I, I think the stubbornness is what made it an ass. You know, ass. You cannot stubborn. make an ass. So an ass is I've like a you know. You see what I'm saying? Like I mean, that's what I was assuming when we were saying ass. You're saying donkey, right? Because a donkey is referred to as an ass. But then I'm assuming. Uh, that I would think of a donkey. Is it possible yeah, to be yeah, free of assumptions? Huh? No. no. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. No. I think we well, that's the no, thing. Your, your mind is first. constantly trying yeah. to uh, make predictions based on yeah. past information. And that's where you get assumptions from. That, but that's, that's where they come from. That's also why... Uh, I, I don't remember who said this, but uh, wisdom is, is hearing without judging. Yeah, I don't know who said that either. Well, I think you can hear without ju- judging, but... No, that's what wisdom is. <laughs> right? so, sounds pretty yeah. good. I like it. Can we just say the... I like, like, the, like Dalai Lama said it or a Buddhist monk somewhere. I like that. I was he just said it, that, you know. What do you mean by judgment? <laughs> well, I was just assuming that, a, that you know, a Buddhist monk or the Dalai Lama said that. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. It could very well be the Dalai <laughs> Lama. <laughs> well, 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 for instance... You see a guy stab another guy. Yeah. All you saw was a guy stabbing another guy. All right. You don't know who was uh, the who was, who's the aggressor right. or what happened. Right. But based on who those two people are, you might assume or judge one person to be the bad guy and one person not to be the bad guy. So wisdom is not judging. Right. I like Harry Clive's definition of judgment. It's not, oh God, it's so good. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> it's to the effect of like, wisdom is not like a vast amount of knowledge about different things. It's recognizing the underlying unity against warring, apparent war, warring opposites. Something to that effect. Mm. Which is almost similar, but stated in a different way. But yeah. So I, I think it's important to say, like, when you do make an assumption based on the info you have, question that assumption. It, yeah, always question. When, yeah, yeah, question that assumption. Well, and that's the thing, because when you can't question your own assumptions, that's when, you know, you're just blind. Like, yeah. So what are we assuming here? That liberty is a good thing. Yeah, we anybody's are. Gonna really? watch I don't, I don't <laughs> we, we, We're assuming we've more than 50 people the, will watch this. We've all made the, the, I, the logical progression for that, though. We, I, I don't think we're, any of us started with that assumption. I'm assuming we'll get less negative comments than last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Uh, Accurate. We want yeah. negative Preferous. comments. We'll test that's that good. afterwards. <laughs> no, 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 negative comments are good though they because it helps us to conversation. Yeah, understand yeah. what we're unclear yeah. about yeah. Exactly. or or maybe yeah. what we were even wrong about. Right. But it isn't about that. I think it's so that people understand that this group is about discussing ideas. Absolutely. And we all have yeah, different that's, perspectives. Yeah. And we're not here to tell you how to think yep. or what to think. Exactly. We, that's we a very good do. point. It's about a conversation. Yeah, exactly. So what you derive from it yeah. these, is what you derive from it. These conversations also have, a lot of the time, we are exploring different aspects of ideas. And we're assuming the dogs were outside. We were assuming yes. those dogs did not open the we door. We did assume they were outside. And I don't know how they got out, but here they are. <laughs> They opened the hand. You left them out in the torrential downpour? <laughs> yeah, torrential downpour. Yeah. Yes, in Antarctica. <laughs> what was that about opposing <laughs> thumbs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dogs know we're in control because we have opposable thumbs. Opposable thumbs. Yeah. Yes. yeah. All you have to do when a dog starts acting up, you just go, listen, this is how the game Two. works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Uh-oh. Shout out bad. to Valley Center Brewery. They're family friendly. You can bring your kids. They have a play section. They're dog friendly. You can bring outside food. All around, thumbs up. Go check them out. Cool. Support. Wow. I think I will. Sounds yeah. like they're happy. <laughs> After I'm past my... Once I start drinking beer again. What, what are you shooting for? About 200. That's what's up. Which is... Ooh, that's awesome. Respect. Yeah. Respect very cool. Respect yeah. Them. Still got about 100 pounds to go, yeah. but... Anyway. One pound at a time. One, yeah, one day at a time. Yeah. 
So could we assume that in the future, at one point or another, there's going to be sentient robots, and that you could, if you so wanted to have sex with sentient robots, would that be fair? That, I think no. we're all assuming that's going to I happen. mean, yeah, if, if that's what floats your boat and, you know, you know, turns your crank or whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turns your crank, yeah. Um, on that note... <laughs> Not enough uh, time to talk about robot sex. Well, shucks. Interesting thought. I'm going to assume that this is the end. <laughs> this is the end <laughs> of our end. story. Good night, everybody. All right, peace out. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night.